Well, 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 welcome everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are under the sound of my voice. I salute all of you in Jesus' name. Blessed apostles and, and um, disciples, Rama, blessings, Aretha, Francesca, blessings of the Lord be upon all of you. Blessings of the Lord, beautiful lavender. Rose, wonderful, wonderful blessings of the Lord. Good morning to you as well from wherever you are under the sound of my voice. I am still I'm at a place where it's an afternoon. The time is almost a little after 4 p.m. my time, but wherever you are, your time is different from mine. But we are not far away from where God is. <laughs> Oh, glory be to God. Well, let us um, have a word of prayer. Saha, Saha, Saha. Blessings of the Lord be upon all of you. Be upon all of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this your precious ones under the sound of my voice. I pray, oh God, that revelation knowledge will flow freely. Let understanding abound and increase in their lives. Bring us, O oh God, to the place where we will have a clear understanding of who we are. And the main purpose of our salvation, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Well, if you are joining me wherever you are now, yesterday we started, uh, we were talking about our salvation. Our salvation. Um, there, there's a lot of things that I believe that if we come to the place of understanding as believers and come to the full knowledge of our salvation, it will be very important for us to um, know how to live this life of the grace dispensation. Yesterday we looked at um, how Apostle Paul encountered this challenge of uh, uh, what um, it's uh, these people who are known to be Judaizers. In other words, this um, Jews who have come to believe, however, they believed that they couldn't do away with the traditions that has been set down for them in the past. And so therefore, we're trying to encourage or, or um, get the, um, the Gentile believers, you know, to uh, live this life of uh, the Old Testament. Well, beloved, we um, pause letter to the Galatians um, threw some more light on uh, the dispensation in which 
we have come to known as the salvation grace of God. And this is what God wanted for man, for man to be saved, man to be saved from our sins. Now, again, yesterday, I took my time to explain to you the agreement and the covenant that God made with man. And as a result of that, the, uh, the, the broken part of our covenant, our side of the bargain, blood has to be shared to redeem man back to God. Because the whole essence of the creation of man was for man to have a relationship with God. However, as the deal goes, man broke its part of the of the um, the agreement or the covenant, and so therefore we have to come back. And the only way for us to come back, because of the nature of the agreement, that um, a sacrifice has to be made, because the the agreement was such that only only blood, except or except death, if you will. Now, man was made with no sin. But man came to break its side of the agreement by sinning. And because of that sinful act, there was a separation between man and God. Now, God loved what he has created. Love, God loved man and still do. And that is why he's even given everybody the opportunity to um, come to the saving knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. And so that no one perishes. The idea of God and the mindset of God is that he does not, he didn't create man to destroy man. Are you listening? God did not create man to destroy man. Man destroyed himself because of the inability to understand. Are you listening? Uh, give me a, a second here. Let me uh, get this thing off. Hold on one second for me. Well, forgive me, this is a uh, live broadcast and um, there was some music going on here. So now, um, man, as a result of breaking his side of the bargain, you know, brought a vacuum between God and man. Now, God has never changed. The agreement was such that for man to come back to its rightful place that is where our salvation comes in and is concerned there has to be the sacrifice of blood so you realize that in the old dispensation the um, the culture the tradition was that the high priest would take a bowl of blood to sacrifice for atoning of the sins of men or people are you getting the revelation here the reason why he did that because of the sinfulness of man and so that was done once in a year just once in a year now if he the the high priest has to do this for man for once in a year, once in a year how long do you think this has to continue God seeing this as a blood that was not enough or sufficient to bridge that gap or to, to amend or to bring back man closer to him. Well, he has to, um, you know, put it in this place where the blood of his only begotten son that he acknowledges has to be shared. Hence, Jesus coming to share his blood and that uh, whosoever believe will ha then have everlasting life not perish but have everlasting life I, I i hope you know that that hasn't thrown you off what i want to talk to you about again is the fact that 
a lot of people are living in this current dispensation with an old traditional mentality. And um, it makes you question whether they have really come to the place of understanding their salvation. Because it, it looks like um, teachings have gone forth as to when you are, you are saved or you, you, you receive your salvation so that you escape hell. All right? You receive your salvation to escape hell. Well, that may be, but the full life of your salvation is not just to escape hell, but to have that relationship with the Father, with a clear understanding of what Jesus has done. Because, because a lot of people are still operating in the old dispensation in the now. And by so doing, it tells you that they have not come to the full saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and what he has come to do for us. It's almost like what Jesus did is not enough. And so therefore, man has to still work out the misquoted scripture of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And therefore, some traditional things has to be made, has to be, has to be, um, you know, rituals has to be done. Some things has to be done. And you see a lot of people still believing and preaching and teaching that. And, and, and it tells you that they have not come to the full knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And his finished work on the cross. And that is where religion comes and plays a vital role in the life of Christians. And so Paul, Apostle Paul, writes to the Galatians concerning what I'm just talking to you about. That they were living as that. They have been saved. Now, I want to make something clear to you that. Paul's ministry was primarily for the Gentiles. And that is you and me who were not Jews or, or called in that uh, by God in that, um, in that region. Are you listening? And so Paul's ministry primarily was focused on the Gentiles. So that because God wanted at this point everybody to be part of this. So Paul writes to the, um, the churches in Galatians because they have believed, however, they were still acting um, in the, the dispensation of the old. And um, the, the Jews who have believe have come to believe that believers were trying to get the gentile believers to conform with the, the old traditions are you listening the old traditions and the rituals which by so doing indicates that well we have believed that the prophecy was that a savior will come uh, however that which our forefathers were given or were, 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 were put down for us, we cannot ignore it. But beloved, Jesus was enough because he said, and I quote, I did not come to abolish the old, but to fulfill it. Now, if Jesus has fulfilled that old dispensation and completed it, then what else is there for you to go back in trying to live? If Jesus has fulfilled it, then what else is your business trying to go back to fulfill or to live that which has been done for you again? And this is what's the, what Paul was telling the, um, the Galatian churches. So yesterday, 
we looked at his letter to them in Galatians chapter, we read chapter 1 and 2. And I told you to please go and read. Are you listening? If all you're going to do is to just listen to preachings and teachings without you reading the word of God, beloved, you're not going to have a clear understanding of it. You're not going to do that. Are you listening? You're not going to have a clear understanding of the word of God. And therefore, therefore, you need to read the word of God. You have to read the word of God. Are you listening to me? You got to read the word of God. Because if you don't do that, beloved, and all you have to do is to be listening to preachings and teachings, it's good. But you have to read it. Are you listening to me? You must read the word of God for yourself as well. Disciple Echa blessings. And so we read chapter 1 and chapter 2. And I told you to read that of chapter chapter 3. I believe I told you to read chapter 3. So we're going to take it from chapter 3 here. Paul, Paul also made a statement in chapter 1 that that which he, Paul, has... Remember, Paul was not taught by anybody regarding salvation. Paul says in chapter 1 verse 11 that, um, let me read that in 12, 11 and 12. For I want you to know, believers, that the gospel which was preached by me is not a man's gospel. In other words, he's saying that it is not a human invention. Or it neither was it patterned after any human concept. For indeed, he says, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught of it, but I received, I received it directly, directly, through a direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul was not one of the disciples who walked with Jesus. Paul was minding his business in destroying believers. Paul was minding the, his business in destroying believers. As a matter of fact, on his way to Damascus to receive, you know, um, an accreditation, if you will, to destroy believers, he met the master and um, the rest was what we see him eventually becoming the greatest apostle of all. He said, indeed, I did not receive it from any man, was, neither was I taught of it, but I received it direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? So Paul went on to explain himself before Letting them know the, the true meaning of their salvation and the true meaning of the ministry of Jesus Christ concerning mankind. And so I encourage you to please read it. And if you missed it, if you didn't read it, please go back and, uh, and do that. All right. Paul was making an emphatic expression or letting the people know about the true meaning of their salvation and also the true meaning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Stellar blessings upon you. Now, again, if you look at uh, verse 16 of chapter 1, Galatians, he continued to say that, that um, it said, verse 15 says, But when God, who had chosen me and set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles the good news. The good news that is the way of salvation. Beloved, the good news is about the salvation of man. The good news, it's about the salvation of man. Nothing but that. The gospel 
of Jesus Christ was all centered about the salvation, the saving life of man. It was nothing but the salvation of man. It was nothing about prosperity. It was nothing about making more money. It's nothing about having more things. It was about the salvation of man. So this is the, the center core of Christianity, salvation. Now, a lot of people have not come to understanding the full or come to the full knowledge of sal their salvation. And therefore, and therefore, are still living in the old dispensation or the old law. In the old law. And this is where the, uh, those who were called the Judaizers, all right? Those are the Jews, the believing Jews were trying to get the, the, uh, the, the believing Gentiles to still conform with the Old Testament rituals and all that. And Paul was telling them that, no, 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 no. It's already done. You don't need to go and live, okay? Don't, have, don't, don't leave the old in the now. Jesus has done it. You are late. You don't have to. It's not just to say that, oh, I believe the Messiah who was prophesied to come. I believe that he is. But is that enough? No. What did he come to do? He came to save mankind from eternal damnation to eternal life. This is where a lot of believers are missing it. He came to do away, save mankind from eternal damnation, eternal death into eternal life. That is what Christianity is all about. That is, that is the meaning of your salvation. And that is why it is so important that you understand and then keep your salvation. So Paul was talking to them that first of all, he addressed... Now, you know that he didn't have it easy because... Of course, when he came around, there were other apostles there and all that. And, you know, anytime you come with what I call a radical, you know, um, message or teachings, you get opposition. You will get opposition. Jesus got a lot of oppositions from the religious people. You know, when Jesus, you know, started his ministry, there were religious people there. Jesus never had a problem with the unbelievers or the sinners. Jesus had a problem. All the problem Jesus had was with the religious people. Those who believe one thing, but were doing that thing, I mean, things of, you know, the, um, of the old. Not allowing the people to have come to the clear understanding and, and move forward. Are you listening? And so therefore... Therefore, Paul was um, engaging the believers. Paul was telling the, the, uh, the Galatian churches that this is not what you ought to do. You don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to go by the traditions and the rituals of the Old Testament. It's already done. Jesus has already done by shedding of his body and of his blood. Again, to understand this agreement, um, you need to understand what God had put in place. So uh, with that said, um, I think we ended up in chapter 2. Today we'll pick it up from chapter 3 and quickly get into chapter 4. All right, quickly get into chapter 4. So then Paul starts saying in verse 1 of chapter 3, again addressing the churches in Galatia, okay, he says, O oh, you foolish Galatians, O oh, you foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians, who have bewitched you that you will act like this. Like what, Paul? To whom? Right before your very eyes, Jesus was publicly portrayed 
as crucified in the gospel message. Jesus was crucified. Okay. Verse 2, he says, this is all I want to ask of you. Now, this is a very important question that every believer, every preacher, every pastor, every church must know this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the requirements of the law? Or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it? Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you receive? Did you receive? Now, now sometimes I, I wonder if many have even received the Holy Spirit and know who the Holy Spirit is. Because you see, another, another demonstration of you to um, um, for one to say that you have not received the Holy Spirit and activating the power of the Holy Spirit is the way you live your life. Listen, I'm keep telling you this. Wrong belief will put you on the wrong way of doing things. Wrong belief. Are you listening? And so here we see Paul asking and Paul was asking the church. Paul was talking to the church. Because the church is still operating. They have believed Jesus being the, 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 the prophet, I mean the prophecies that was being fulfilled. However, they are still operating in the old dispensation of the law. We're going to look at some stuff here today. Please follow in tow. Now look at verse 3. He says, are you so foolish and senseless? Having begun your new life by faith. Get the revelation here. With the spirit, are you now being perfected and reaching spiritual maturity by the flesh? And that is by your own works and efforts to keep the law. Listen to what Paul was asking, asking them. You, you know, it's like, because, because beloved, for you to keep the law... It's you have to work it. You got to work to be, you know, to be to to be perfect. You got to work to be perfect, and um, and or to keep it. And so here they 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 have not come to the full saving knowledge of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and what He has done for us. And if you look at you look at the churches today, a lot of people are still doing that. Pastors and preachers still believe that, yes, it's one thing for Jesus to die. It's another thing for, for you to still act, you know, and operate and activate the rituals of the Old Testament, the, the old law. The old law, believing all kinds of stuff, believing all kinds of stuff. Be, uh, I'll give you an example, Silbert, like believing that... Uh, uh, you are still under bondage and family bondage. What do you call it? Family curse, generational curse, that kind of stuff. Beloved, come on. You haven't come to the saving, the full saving knowledge of your salvation yet. If you are still believing those things, if you still believe it, no, you have not. Because if not, then you are making the, the, the shed blood of Jesus inactive. That is what you are saying. In other words, you are saying that Jesus was not enough. All that Jesus has done was not enough. That's basically what you're saying. Verse 4. Have you suffered? Listen to what he's saying. Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing? He's expecting, you know, asking the question. Have you gone through all this for nothing? Don't you understand your salvation? And then he says, and he says, if indeed it was all for nothing, so then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles among you, do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently in the message which 
you heard with faith. I mean, this, 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 this letter here and Paul's um, 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 dialogue with these people, I mean, speaks volumes and speaks for itself. If you are a believer, if you say you are a believer, beloved, you need to take your time and study this, read this, and see what Paul, the Apostle Paul, was talking about. Look at this. It's self-explanatory for you to know where you are. Verse 6 says, Just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited or accounted to him as righteousness, or as conformity to God's will and purpose, so it is with you also. Just as Abraham believed God. So in other words, you, you need to come to believe in the, the finished work of Jesus Christ. And that should be enough for you. That should be what, because Jesus said it is finished. He came to fulfill it all. What could have taken you 120 years to do? Jesus did it for you in three years. What more can you ask for? But yet, because of ignorance, many do not have this understanding. Verse 7 says, So understand, so understand that it is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God, people who live by faith, who are true sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, all right, proclaim the good news of salvation to Abraham in advance with this promise. And this is what he says. In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In you, in you shall all, in you shall all the nations, the nations, including whatever nation you are, shall the nations be blessed. And you can find that, I believe, in Genesis chapter 12. So then those who are, who are people of faith, whether Jew or Gentile, are blessed and favored by God. And declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty. And place it right standing and having a right standing with him. That's Christ along with Abraham, the believer. Get the revelation here. Are you listening to me? This is powerful. This is, this is very powerful. So you have to understand that, beloved, your salvation is centered and complete. This is why I say this. That you are complete in Christ. You are complete in Christ. There's nothing else missing in your life. You don't have to work out any of so-called your salvation. That scripture here has been misunderstood by many. That is in, um, I believe in uh, Philippians chapter 2. Are you listening to this? When Paul was telling the, the Philippians, the church of Philip of, of the of the Philippi, he was telling them to work out their own salvation. In other words, keep what God has given you, keep what you have received. Beloved, you cannot work your salvation. You can't. You don't have what it takes to work. And this is why Jesus came. Because in the, in the dispensation of the law, the law was given for you to work, okay, to fulfill it. But man could not do it. Man could not obey that which God... Now, you see the deal God made with man. Go back and read it. Like I said, okay, listen, there are, all you know is the Ten Commandments. It's over 615 or 13. Start from... Exodus to Numbers to Leviticus to Deuteronomy. Just go there. All the laws are there. Most of the time, we only know about the Ten Commandments that Moses received. As a matter of fact, Moses received two times. But here is for you to understand that you don't need 
anymore to work the rituals and the traditions of the fathers. Jesus says, I came to fulfill it. I didn't come to throw it away. No, I came to fulfill it for you because you could not fulfill it. So he has come to do it. And then all you have to do is for you to receive, believe it and receive it. But today, you still have churches who believe that you are still under a curse. Beloved, curse comes as a result of sin. Are you listening? Curse. That is why in the old dispensation or the old testament, the priest would take a bowl of blood of, of ram or sheep, whatever, to, to sacrifice, to make sacrifices for the sins of man every year, once a year. But for once, your sins have been washed away with one blood that will never will never have to repeat itself again. Now, if you don't come to understand this, you will still be walking around in guilt and in condemnation and you'll be saying that I am a sinner. How do you become a believer, a child of God, born saved, and still talk about I am a sinner? Meanwhile, your sins have been forgiven. Now you tell me. I helped you from the grocery store with your things to your house. And that was your complete area where you are going, your final destination. Now, I have left. And what you are saying is that, oh, let me go back to the grocery store and look for some, uh, something else to carry back. Beloved, all your stuff has been carried. I help you carry your things. So what else are you going back there and looking for? Isn't that interesting that some of these traditions and rituals of the Old Testament that some of you believers are still are still doing, it hasn't worked. You are still doing the same thing. Still doing the same thing. You did it one time and it didn't work. And you have to do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. You haven't come to this true saving knowledge of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? You haven't come to the full. And this is what Paul was telling the, the churches in Galatia. Paul wasn't talking to unbelievers. He was talking to the believers. The churches. And today the churches are still doing the same. Why? Because they have not come to the full knowledge of the saving grace in which we are living in. So he says, watch this now, verse 10. For all who depend on the law, for all who depend on the law, seeking justification and salvation by obedience of the law and the observance of rituals are under a curse. You are under a curse. Listen to these preachers and pastors who you are still believing that people are still under some uh, family curse or generational curse and all those things. Look at, listen to this, unless you do not believe it. He says, verse 10 again, for all who depend on the law, seeking justification and salvation by obedience to the law and the observance of rituals are under a curse. For it is written, listen to this now, a lot of you miss this. It is written, curse is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law. Curse. So as to practice them. So as to practice them. So if you want to believe that you are under a curse, it's not as a result of a bloodline, family, whatever. It's as a result of you still practicing the things of the old by the law. Are you listening to this? So therefore, now verse 11, it is clear. It is clear that no one is justified. Listen to this. No one is justified or declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in, in right standing before God by the law. Nobody. No party. I mean, 
sometimes I, I wonder when you read the word, you understand it. And beloved, let me just tell you how you can understand the word if you don't. Ask the Holy Spirit, the one that you don't know. You better know him. Because a lot of people, a lot of people in a lot of churches don't even, don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, 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 I get concerned when I hear that a church doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit came only on the, on the disciples and that's it since then. Now, who are you today? Are you a disciple or you are what? And meanwhile, Jesus says that he, when the Holy Spirit comes, he would dwell with us and be in us forever. Forever. So what are you? What, what do you mean by you don't believe in the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit came and he has left. What do you mean by that? What kind of teachings are you doing? And this is why Christianity is not spreading fast. Why? Because they lack understanding. They lack understanding. The other day I said a lot of preachers have to sit down and get the right teachings. I said that. And this is why I, I say this. Because if you are teaching something contrary to the understanding and the real meaning of the word of God, then obviously you haven't gotten it yet. Look at verse 12. But the law does not rest on all require faith. The law does not rest or require faith. It has nothing to do with faith. The law has nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with faith, but instead the law says, he who practices them, this is the law talking, the things prescribed by the law shall live by them instead of faith. If you want to continue to practice the things of the Old Testament, then you, you are subjected to it and whatever consequences that it comes with. That's what it means. Listen, if, we, if you don't rightly divide this word of God, of truth, eh? you will still be in bond. And that's why, listen, the spirit of religion is the enemy of Christians. Religion. Now, verse 13 says, Christ purchased our freedom. Oh, glory be to God. Jesus, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. Oh, why can't you believe this? Christ became a curse. Christ purchased our freedom. He purchased our freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from eternal damnation into eternal life. Watch this now. Verse 13 again. Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse. Jesus became a curse. In order that, watch this now, uh, for it is written, it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Curse or on the cross. Curse is everyone. Now, when was the last time you hung on, you, you saw yourself hanging on a tree? When was the last time you saw yourself hanging on a tree? And so why are you believing that you are under a curse? Because scripture says, curse is the one who, let me read that to you again. Look in your Bible. Look in there. Look in there. Look verse 13 again of, chapter, of Galatians 3. Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone, including you, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree or curse is everyone crucified on a cross. So Jesus became a curse. Be, be, he became a curse for your curse as a result of your sins. So if he has done that for you, then what else? Why do you want to go back? 
and find whatever has been done for you. And Christians can't move forward. We, it, the things that we're supposed to receive and achieve, we are not getting it because we are believing wrong. When you believe wrong, beloved, you cannot get things right. You can't. In order that, look at verse 14. He became a curse on the tree or, or hung on the cross. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles. Remember, you and I were the Gentiles. We were not Jews called by God. So that, in other words, Jesus... Okay, Christ Jesus became the blessing of Abraham. I mean, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing, the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles. So that, so that we will also receive the, the, the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. So that we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Now he comes and says, brothers and sisters, I speak in human terms. I speak in the terms of human relation, even though a last will and testament is just a human covenant. Yet when it has been signed and made legally binding, no one sets it aside or add to it. In other words, you cannot modify it. Now you see, Paul was writing because Paul was a lawyer. Paul was a legal person. So he's writing like, like, like Luke, a physician, writes in, you know, from the lenses of medicine. Paul was writing, understanding the legalities between God and man. Get this revelation here. Are you listening? Now the promises 16. Now the promises, okay, in the covenant were decreed to Abraham and to his seed. God does not say and to his seeds. So in other words, we the Gentiles were not even part of it. We were not even part of the agreement. But let me show you how we became part of it. Okay, verse 16 again. Now the promises in the covenant. Oh boy, time is going. Um, in the promises of the, now the promises in the covenant were decreed to Abraham and to his seed. God does not say and to seeds, in other words, not to descendants or heirs, as if referring to many persons, but as to one, and that one seed who is none other than Christ Jesus. This is what I, I mean, the law which came into existence 430 years later after the covenant concerning the coming Messiah does not and cannot invalidate the covenant previously established by God so as to abolish the promise. For if the inheritance, watch this carefully, for if the inheritance of what was promised is based on observing the law, okay, if the inheritance of what was promised is based on the law, as these false teachers claim, Paul is saying, it is no longer based on a promise. However, God granted it to Abraham as a gift by virtue of his promise. Verse 19, why then the law? What was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to people their guilt because of transgression. And that is to make people conscious of the sinfulness of sin. That was the whole purpose of the law or the covenant. The, the law or the covenant was made for people to see how sinful they are. And in other words, you need God. In other words, you need him. You became unrighteous for you to even stand before God or even call his name. You couldn't. And like I said yesterday, a lot of people think that God has become an old man and, and he has changed. Let me tell you something. He says, I'm the Lord your God. I change not. I am the same yesterday, today and forever. The difference in the way he used to deal with people then and now is because of Jesus. I'm telling you. So you better, you better receive Jesus and, 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 and just receive everything in him. 
Glory be to God. Look at verse, um, verse 19 again. Why then the law? What was its purpose? It was added after the promise of Abraham to reveal to people their guilt because of transgression. Are you listening? Because of their transgression. That is to make people conscious of the sinfulness of sin and the law was ordained through angels and delivered to Israel by the hand of a mediator, Moses. The mediator between God and Israel. Get this revelation here. Moses was the mediator between God and the children of Israel. You were not part of it. We were considered the Gentiles. I'll show you how we become part of it now in a minute. Stay with me. The mediator between God and Israel to be in effect until the seed. You remember we saw the seed in, the, in verse 16. The seed is Christ. Until the seed will come to whom the promise has been made. Verse 20. Now the mediator or the go between in transaction is not needed for just one party. Whereas God is only one. God is only one. And was the only one giving the promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two. God and Israel. Its validity depends on both. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a system of law had given had been given which could impact life, then righteousness, which is right standing with God, will actually have been based on law. But the scripture has imprisoned everyone, and that is everything, the entire world and the sin, so that the inheritance, the blessing of, of salvation, which was promised through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe in him and acknowledge him as God's precious son. So the key word here is believe. Do you believe? You the preachers and pastors, the churches and all that, do you believe the finished work of Jesus Christ? That is where the, that is where the question is. Do you believe it? If you believe the totality of the finished work of Jesus Christ, then why are you still operating in the old dispensation and believing the things of the old dispensation? And most of the things, they didn't even have nothing to do with you. In the book of Thessalonians, I believe, first or second, I, I, I got to check it. It's a long time I read it. It says, mind your own business. Mind your own business. You are being a busy body for nothing. And this thing has nothing to do with you, the Gentiles. Now, therefore, faith came. We were kept in custody under the law. Before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law. Perpetually in prison in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed. With the results that the law has become our teacher and our disciplinarian to justify that, okay, to uh, to guide, I'm sorry, let me read that again, verse 24. With the results, that was the law, with the result that was the law, has become our teacher, the law, and our disciplinarian to guide us to Christ so that we may be justified and that is declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in the right standing with God. That is what the law was about. That's what the old covenant was. That's the old dispensation was. That was the whole thing. Thank you, Lavanda. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 11. It talks about mind your own business. You are minding the business of other things that didn't have nothing to do with you. Look at verse 25. My time is up. I want you to listen. I want you to take your time and read chapter 3. I mean chapter 3 and 4. I may, I may I have to probably end with chapter 3 today. Alright? Now verse 25 says, But now that faith has come, 
we are no longer under the control and authority of a tutor or a teacher and disciplinarian. For you who are born again have been reborn from above. That is a spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and you are all children of God set apart for his purpose with, with full rights and privileges through faith in Jesus Christ. I, I think I'm going to end up here. Oh, that sounds so good. I feel like I want to have some ice cream right now. I feel like I want to have some ice cream. I'm just, that sounds so good. Glory be to God. Listen to that again. My goodness. He says, for you who are born again, you have been reborn from above. Oh, hallelujah. You, in other words, you are spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and all of us are children of God apart from his purpose with full, set apart, sorry, set apart for his purpose with full rights and privileges through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if, if that is your portion, you better shout a big amen, hallelujah. Now, with this understanding, how do I then also come to be believing some, you know, uh, 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 um, generational cash, uh, uh, some uh, family this uh, and that kind of stuff? Beloved, <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, okay, have clothed yourselves with Christ. And that is, you have taken on his characteristics and values. There is now no distinction in regard to salvation. Neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you who believe are all one in Christ Jesus. No one can claim a spiritual superiority over you. So some of you who are seeing other people as, as superior spiritually and all that, because you see as such, listen, pastors and preachers or whatever, they, 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 they are to just give you guidelines and spiritual directing you to this word. That's it. Other than that, I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know where they're coming from. Beloved, you are born, you are born again set free. And you are free indeed. Enjoy your freedom. Take your time and read and read the scripture. You, if you listen, I'm telling you, if you don't read the scripture, you are going to be in bondage, religious bondage. And and it looks like there's a lot of Christians still in religious bondage, sitting in churches and not moving forward. You see what you you I always tell you this about treadmill. You know, treadmill, that machine that you go to the gym, you stand on it. It looks like you are going forward, but you are standing at the same place. That, that, is, that is what I see. Because I'm telling you, when you open your mouth and talk to some preachers and what comes out of their mouth, it makes you wonder, have, have they really been born again themselves? Do they understand their salvation? So then it makes you be, it think it's like, how many people are receiving messages wrongly? And like I said, if you believe wrong, how can you function right? And our assignment today as believers, by the one in whom we have been saved, is that go and to the, all the nations and make disciples Go and tell people about this, the salvation, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Yet Christians can't do it. Why? Because we don't understand. And if you don't understand this, you wouldn't even know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, how can you stand and take authority of your environment? How can you take authority? 
You can't take authority of what you don't understand. You cannot take authority. So just imagine, I mean, Christians who don't have understanding and not taking authority, how can we then obey the commandment of the Master Jesus to go here and make disciples? And he says, if you love me, obey my commandment. And yet, oh, Paul really suffered. I'm telling you. Because by teaching this, sometimes I, 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 I wish I could just come into your, your, your brains and chisel, chisel, chisel all that wrong teachings and, and, and plaster with this new ones. I'm telling you, get, get it instantly. It's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will, will do what he has to do. The conviction is of the Holy Spirit. You can't change anybody. I can't change nobody. And so when I, I bring you the word of God, I trust the Holy Spirit to do his work. Today, may you be encouraged. May you come to that saving understanding and the knowledge of your salvation. Christianity is all about our salvation. Because for God so loved the world, he sent, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him, you will not perish, but you have everlasting life. You will not perish. For God so loved, he loved the world. But the question is, do you, whosoever believe, do you believe? Do you believe the finished work of Jesus? Well, let me give you those Somebody's watching me right now. I don't know who you are and which country you are watching from. But I believe you are saying to yourself, you know, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to make him my Lord and Savior. He came to die for me for my sins. So that my sins, if I believe in him, then I come into the saving grace and enjoy the dispensation of the grace this is a grace dispensation. But how can you enjoy what you don't understand? How can you enjoy what you don't understand? And so, you are watching me now. Give your life to Jesus. That's all I'm going to say. I'm giving you opportunity for you to, to respond to what you have heard. And you have not given your life to Jesus. You must do that now. If you are that person, let me pray with you. I don't know where you are. If you think you'll be distracted by somebody watching you or you watching somebody or somebody getting your attention, just close your eyes. Closing our eyes when we're praying is just simple so that we don't get distracted. That's it. Don't, don't, make, don't make any theory out of that. So close your eyes if you have to. If not, the important thing is opening your heart to receive him, your heart. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 43, I believe it says, it says that guard your heart, guard it, protect it with all diligence because out of your heart springs out the issues of life, the issues you are having, whether it's financial issues or marital issues or educational issues or family issues, out of your heart, you are, things that goes in your heart comes out and affect you. And so this is why you need Jesus to be the center, the Lord in your heart. So I open your heart now and say this prayer with me now. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing this message. I, I invite you into my heart. I welcome you into my heart. Receive me right now, Lord. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And help me to walk with you. And then and, and live for you. I thank you. In Jesus name. Your name I pray. Amen. That's it. Pastor, short prayer. Yes. What else do you want to, you want to pray until tomorrow? No. The important thing is you open your heart to receive him in your heart. Are you listening? Now you can spend 20 hours in praying if you want to. Prayer is you talking to God. When you read the word, God speaks to you. That is why it's so important for you to read the word. If you want God to speak to you, read the word. 
When you pray, you speak to God. That's what it is. Are you listening? Now, the next thing you want to do is look for a Bible believing teaching church. Uh, okay, a, a place of worship. You are the church. A Bible believing teaching worship center. And go there. Introduce yourself. Let them know you are born again. You have received Jesus and made him your Lord and Savior. And you have to be baptized. You got to be baptized. Another thing about, but I have to go back and, and teach about baptism again. Don't even know why people are baptizing, you know, once in a year. How are you going baptizing once in a year? And again, let me remind you as a disciple, you can baptize. Baptism is not written for only your pastors to baptize. If what of if you, if you can't bring the person to church and it is you who saved, who got that person saved, baptize that person, find some water, a bowl, whatever, and just immerse the person in it. But listen, we got to have the clear understanding of our calling. We are leaving everything on the pastors to do. And the pastor is a human being like you. And you are a Christian. At least you call yourself one. Understand your responsibility as well. And don't leave all the work on your pastors. As much as you're supposed to help them do. But the most important assignment, if you say you're a Christian and a child of God, is for you to make disciples. That's why I, I encourage whether you are a pastor or you are just an ordinary church sitting, uh, pew warm or whatever, pick up the Facebook. That your cell phone you are holding, go there and preach the gospel. You two do it. Do it. Don't wait for your pastors alone. Your pastor may not be able to reach some people that you will be able to reach. Are you listening? Well, this is it. I've gone a little over my time and um, just want you to know because I love you. And there's nothing you can do about that. All right? Don't look at my afro. Don't worry. I'll be coming home soon to get a haircut. <laughs> God bless you. Well, listen. I want you to know you don't have no trouble. Take your time this weekend if it's a weekend at wherever you are read go back and read chapter one two three four and five of galatians are you listening until I, I come your way may the eyes of the lord watch between us and um may you be fulfilled and have a better understanding of the better covenant the bible says that the old covenant is absolute the new is a better one. Jesus said, in my blood, the blood he shed, in my blood is a new covenant. So why are you still embracing that of the old? Embrace the new and be refreshed. Well, as to, until I come your way, same time, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Share this broadcast. God bless you.